First question is from Katie Conton. What's the best way to get rid of a mom pooch? Everything else has returned but the midsection. Oh, yeah. This can be super frustrating for... Uh, so many names for this, by the way. Yeah, I know, yeah, right? And, and not just... This isn't just a mom thing. Yeah. Well, this, there's there's a couple things. That we called we, it the fupa. You're, you're right. There's a couple things I want. Thanks, uh, Justin. Just, Holy cow! No problem. There's a couple things I want to I want to talk about here with this because if it's ex excess body fat, you could get leaner. Um, that's the main reason why a lot of people have a pooch. But specifically to moms or to women who just had a baby or can't seem they get lean, they work their abs, their obliques, they train their body. And even though their body fat percentage is down, they have this kind of lower belly pooch that sticks out a little bit and they can't figure out why. Very frustrating because they're doing everything they're supposed to. I've trained women in this particular situation. And really, this is the result. If you're lean and you're fit and you're working out and everything else is good and you still have this, this is because your TVA muscle has not been uh, properly strengthened post-pregnancy. So this is a, a muscle, TVA stands for transverse abdominis, and it's a muscle that is, it's deep in the core, so it's under the abs and the obliques, and it surrounds the midsection, and it's kind of like a corset or a weight belt. So when you're at the beach and you suck in your stomach, mm. the muscle that sucks in your stomach is your TVA. When you're pregnant, this muscle has to stretch and atrophy to make room for baby. It's This muscle in particular has to stretch and atrophy because it's the one that shrinks your midsection. So when it stretches and atrophies as the baby grows, then you have the baby and then it, you know, there, there's nothing in there anymore. There's no more baby in there, but this muscle remains atrophied and, and weak. And so you strengthen your abs, you work out your obliques, yeah. you get leaner, but because you didn't strengthen this specific muscle that tightens up and shrinks the waist, the, your organs kind of push out a little bit because the midsection's full of organs, right? Push out a little bit. So you get this lower belly pooch. So the solution for this, in this particular situation, is to do exercises that specifically work the TVA. Mm, One of the them- Drawing in maneuvers. That's it. One of them in particular is called a, a, a stomach vacuum. This is an mm -hmm. old school exercise bodybuilders used to do. We actually have a great YouTube video on Mind Pump TV about this specific exercise. So we'll make sure we link it in the show notes where I teach how to do it. But this exercise is great for strengthening that and getting rid of that particular Yeah, also pooch. cat, cow, and, and uh, you know, techniques like that. But definitely they all uh, revolve around that drawing in maneuver. We even have this as a component in our prime uh, test, uh, the wall test. And so that's something that you can check whether or not, uh, you know, you have access to that properly where your ribs will then flare out a bit if it's if it's not uh, contracting properly. So that's something to consider too in terms of your overall bracing when you get back into weightlifting. You want to be able to have that uh, reestablished so you're uh, you know stabilizing everything correctly. So I agree with you guys, but I don't think this is the only thing going on here. Um, and this, I, I didn't realize this until it happened to me. So that's why I made the statement that this Sorry, isn't just- You got is, the dad pooch? Yeah. Like a, <laughs> so Dad uh, bumper. And, and I know there's going to be a ton of people that relate to this because after this happened to me, and then I, I've spoken about this before in the podcast a long time ago, and I, I've had tons of DMs in regards to it after I, I talked about it. And I remember when I was getting ready, before I was going to actually get on stage, I, I had the first year of like, I, I told myself, okay, if, I, if I'm going to do this thing where I'm going to compete and get on stage, I'm going to do a year of training and dieting uh, without a show in mind, right? Which is what I recommend most people. So before you decide you're going to sign up for a show and just compete, why not you know, run a dry run of pretending like you're going to get ready for stage so you can get a feel of what it's going to be like? So I did that the year leading up into competing. And uh, up until that point, I had never pushed myself below 7% body fat. 7.5-8% was the lowest I'd ever been in my life uh, until until I was deciding that I was going to actually compete, right? So I was sub 6% body fat. This is, And here I am a year before I decide I'm going to get to comp uh, start competing. And actually, one of the things that blew me away that I, I just I couldn't figure it out at first was... I was shredded. It was lean. It was 6% or less. Yet I had this little tiny pooch still in my lower abdomen. Of body fat? Of body fat. Mm -hmm. And I and it just didn't make sense to me. Yet I'm shredded, vascular everywhere else. But then it just seems like I have this little bit of stubborn fat. Now, 
here's my theory. Uh, we talk about on the show a lot, um, you know, every time why yo-yo dieting is so bad. Every time you you lose body fat, then gain it back, and then lose it and gain it back. You know, we talk about that the body actually can add fat cells. And we've also talked about how, you know, everybody has different stubborn areas on their body and areas that you tend to put the body fat uh, on first is always seems to be the last place that you lose it also. So that's for a lot of men and women, it can be that lower kind of pooch area. So what I realized was even when I got that lean, I still had this. Now I was training core and abs and doing a lot of things to, you know, draw it in. So when I actually hit stage the very first time, I still had this. Now you can't tell because I'm using the drawing. I'm drawing in, I'm keeping my abs contracted. So in photos and what everybody saw on stage, you can't really tell. But I knew, you know, I knew I still kind of had this little pooch thing, even though I was fucking shredded. And it wasn't until about the third show. So I had to get as shredded as I had ever been, then put on good lean mass, not put a bunch of body fat on, put good muscle on, speed the metabolism back up, then shred back down again, then do that. I had to do that about three times. It was about my third show before I actually completely eliminated that that low pooch. And again, like right now where i What percentage I'm, were you at the third time? Uh, I was about 3%. So after my first show, I'd say my first show, well, no, I should say my first show, I came in about that lean. So yeah, I was leaner even on my very first show. So I'll, I'll, I'll put pictures up sometimes so people can see. I know you guys have seen them before where I have like my arm out straight like this. I'd never been that straight. We, I was, have, a, we have a poster in the, in the bathroom. Yeah, it's yeah, in my right. bedroom. I actually. mean, I was gaunt. Uh, that was the, uh, the first time too that I'd ever messed with uh, clenbuterol and I thought it was so insane. My body was just like melting fat off of it and and muscle and it was like it was crazy how i felt and no I, discount code for that yeah that. <laughs> yeah yeah we don't sell that <laughs> no. uh, and i don't recommend it by any means yeah, it no, was no reputable companies uh, yeah it definitely was one of the scariest things that i ever messed with but it did get me leaner than i'd ever been in my life but yet still i still had that pooch so my point is that sometimes even when you get all the way down that you might still have these stubborn areas of body fat because of years and years and years of adding fat cells mm -hmm. to your body and that it may not just come off the very first time that you get lean. You may have to get leaner than you've ever been before, You know, stay consistent still, dieting and training, build muscle, build the metabolism up, yep. then come back down again to, to finally like get, cause it's, I, I think what makes it stubborn, it's stored energy, right? And if you're feeding your body, you have a body fat other places, the body will, will well, get it where it's easiest. Fat cells can actually convert too. They can become uh, brown fat, which uh, is more likely to burn and produce heat for the body and other types of fat are much more stubborn and doing the yo-yo dieting can, can reduce the amount of brown fat you have on your body. Your body becomes more resistant uh, to losing it and mm. back to competitors. Competitors that bulk the wrong way, that just put on a ton of body fat and go crazy, and then try and get lean again. Yes. You notice them each show. That's why it gets worse. unable to get. And this yeah. that, that's why this is my theory. This is also why I think they struggle with that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think because each time they put on all that extra weight, they add more fat cells, which it just makes, makes it harder. Just makes it that much more difficult. Especially if they kind of have, they think they have figured their body out, and they have this like system, like oh, I cut this many calories, I eat these meals, I do this much cardio, I get this lean, and each time it gets more and more difficult. Now, for now them. what makes this especially frustrating though um if for moms who because i've had a few clients like this that were they worked out going into pregnancy they worked out during pregnancy they had good nutrition these are health healthy people with good uh fitness routines then they worked out after and then they'd come to me and be like what this is so weird i can't get my midsection used to be so flat i'm lean i'm testing my body fat what's going on i don't necessarily have a lot of body fat there but my lower midsection part seems to pooch out a little bit mm. and it was because their tva mm. muscles weren't tight or strong and then here's the flip of that by the way you can actually shrink your waist without getting any leaner by strengthening your tva i talked about the vacuum exercise that's a direct exercise but here's something else you can do every time you do an ab exercise or a oblique exercise while you're doing the movement let's say you're doing crunches while you're doing the crunches draw in your midsection, like you're trying to bring your belly button to your spine. Do that in combination with the ab exercise. It'll make it much more difficult, but what it does is it simultaneously tightens up the TVA and gives you a tighter, smaller waist. From a performance standpoint, 
TV mu- TVA muscles extremely important. Strong TVA will strengthen your your stability, your spine, prevent injury. And if you are an athlete, you definitely want a uh, strong TVA because it's going to make you more powerful. It's it's just going to make you 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 more well, stiff and stable. And especially with moms and you know back pro- like issues like like tightnesses and pains and whatnot, that's something that's going to help to address that and keep you in good posture, which. You know, you're going to be very much front loaded all the time carrying uh, your kid around and doing everything right in front of you. So it's something to consider is really uh, to be able to maintain that and to draw in is still going to help support, uh, you, you know, the spine in that position where you're always like dude, kind of curling forward. Dude, you, you get someone who just had a baby and they're, they're cleared to exercise and you get them to try to do a vacuum and half the time they can't even activate the muscles. Yeah. Like they can't even draw in. It takes a lot of work. It does because those muscles had to turn off. So you need to, that is 100% should be a part of your routine. We have a, a in fact, we have a Fit Mom uh, bundle, which is a bundle of MAPS uh, programs that we put together specifically for moms or people who just had kids. And once you get cleared, so long as you're free of injury, the way you follow the bundle is it starts with MAPS Anywhere. It's a great program to start with and there are drawing in maneuvers and exercises specifically designed to really strengthen the core it's a great workout generally overall great place to start um, and then it's got hit in there which is a great way to burn excess calories because a uh, number one goal for for you know moms after birth you know having a child have good youtube videos and there. there's great youtube yeah. videos and then there's maps anabolic in there for the metabolism so if you're looking for like a like okay i just want instruction and i want to follow something and you get clearance to work out and you're free of injury, uh, take a look at the Fit Mom bundle. That'll handle this and, and a lot of other things. Mm-hmm.